You ever feel the need to just hop in the car, go for a drive, and to just clear your thoughts? I did. Found a nice quiet spot to do so. Louisville football has lost a second straight. Cardinals now 3-2 and two overall. 1-1 one one in the ACC following a 34-27 home loss to SMU. Cardinals sure to fall from the rankings. SMU sure to climb into the rankings. Cardinals number 16 in the latest FPI following the loss. What do you say we hike about it? Across the river, the Ohio River that is, from Louisville into the Hoosier State, and at the Hoosier National Forest. This is the Hemlock Cliffs Trail. Kind of a favorite of mine for the area. It's a popular spot. Hey there, there was a lot, a lot to digest, a lot of things not to like. What did we like? Something that I liked, kind of, initially didn't too much, grew on me. Just look at the, at the photos, grows on me a little bit more. So not a complete thumbs up, but I applaud the effort and I think Continued effort could make it even really good. What am I talking about? The gold lettering, gold cardinal bird on the helmets for the Cardinals. If I was grading that, I'd give it a B. So I guess I, I kind of liked it. Something else that I liked. This is consistent, which is why I like it. Ja'Cory Brooks. I'll mention it more probably when I talk about him when I'm grading the wide receivers, but the guy is just, I mean, week after week, big play after big play. He's going to be playing in the league. Really like to see his big play consistency continuing, continuing now through five games for the Cardinals. Something I didn't like, something that Jeff Brown didn't like something that you didn't like. Substitutions are a continued problem for the Cardinals. And it, you see it on both sides of the ball, but it's, it kind of seems a little bit more glaring defensively. I mean, there was a kind of a laughable moment against SMU where there was confusion. Who's coming? Who's going? SMU's getting close to, is, I believe they were in the red zone. Yeah, they were in the red zone. And Louisville can't figure out substitution pattern. And by the time we figure out, hey, we need to get another guy on the field. Well, unfortunately for Louisville, that player was still in the backfield of SMU when the Mustang snapped the ball. Yeah, another yellow flag. Those are the kind of miscues that cannot just happen with consistency, no less. It's those type of miscues that led to a quite visibly upset Jeff Brom, as he should be, in his postgame last night, essentially sitting down at the table as soon as it begins, as soon as he gets the okay, begin. Starts pointing the finger, not at me, pretend I'm Jeff Brom. He's basically saying, that's on me, that's on my coaches. And there are probably a few coaches who felt that heat a little bit more so than others. Continuing with something that we don't like. Hot starts by the opponent. It just almost kind of like a hot knife through butter in the last couple games. Knock on the helmet. Is anybody home there defensively to get these things started? Cardinals for a second straight week because of miscues on both sides of the ball. 
but defensively just essentially non-present to get things going against the Irish and now against SMU. Cardinals had a string of over 20 straight games where they didn't allow the opponent to score on their opening drive. Louisville now has a string of two straight games where they've allowed the opponent to score on its opening drive. Don't like that. Something that I also like, the passionate fan base. And something we've always heard referenced, I've said it myself when we're talking about Louisville's current head coach, Jeff Brom, the passionate fan base. One thing that has often been said, myself included among those that have said it, one of the things that's so attractive about Jeff Brom is he's one of ours. Not just that he's Louisville born, not that he's just played quarterback at UofL and did quite well doing so, no, not all of, the, all of those things. His number as a player is amongst those honored on the ring at Illinois Stadium. Looking at the passionate fan base, and here I am at a junction. Is there a metaphor here? If there is, it is purely coincidental. But if Jeff Brom is one of us, speaking as the card nation, you look at the response, the reaction throughout the game, post-game. Card Nation's a little ticked off. They expected a lot more. It was clear, even before Jeff Brom came in the post-game interview, that he was ticked off. More ticked off than I think we could tell while he was on the field. I think he let a lot of frustrations out from the time he got into the Howard Schnellenberger football complex, who we played for at UofL. To the time he made his way into the defensive team meeting room where a few a good number of media were waiting his post-game comments i think he let some frustrations out that we may not have seen understandably he sits down on the team in the press in the post game you've seen it i'm sure by now it immediately points the finger at himself points the finger at his coaches blamed the plan also said the plan wasn't properly executed, which again goes all back on Jeff Brom and his coaching staff. It's probably the most uh, fired up I've seen him during a post-game press conference at Louisville. What will be the results of that? Stay tuned. Something that I didn't like, this is a consistent thing here, is Louisville's defense against mobile quarterbacks. Here's a theme, Louisville's going to continue to see mobile quarterbacks this year. Let's figure it out sooner than the second half. Don't like that, it makes me dizzy how horribly Louisville continues to start against mobile quarterbacks. Dizzy, I tell you. It's dizzying. Get that fixed. <laughs> Should we get the report card started? Let's get the report card started. As always, let's start with the quarterbacks. Tyler Shuck being the only quarterback that played against SMU on Saturday. One of the bright spots for the Cardinals in a game full of non-bright spots. Three, four, through for 329 yards. Now sits amongst the top 15 nationally in Yards per game, yards per attempt. Got sacked three times, hit seven more times. So he had a lot of pressure and still threw for three, over 300 yards. A number of those throws in difficult situations and well, those throws in difficult situations, pretty on point with their targets. Tyler Shuck and Louisville quarterbacks for the performance against SMU, straight up A. Run backs. Isaac Brown continues to prove that uh, he seriously needs to be considered for freshman All-American once this season is completed. Hit the century twin over the century mark 
for a second time this season. Also doing it against Austin P in the season opener. He's effective in the passing game, pulling in five receptions as well. Clearly the feature back had 10 carries against SMU. Solid performance, except for when it comes to pass block. Really low grade when it comes to pass block. An area that he needs to continue to improve. As do most true freshman running backs. But right now, he's averaging about 72.8 yards per game. Which is good for second best amongst all freshmen in the country. There's a young man at, down at Louisiana Monroe that's averaging about two or three yards more per game than Isaac Brown is. So amongst power five freshmen, power four freshmen, Isaac Brown is the top true freshman when it comes to yards per game. Running backs, need to see a little bit more from Donald Chaney. I'd like to see more from Kiwan Brown. For the running backs against SW, we're going to give you a B plus. This hike will not be going in there today. Let's continue above ground. Wide receivers. Wide receivers. Jacory Brooks. Another nice day due to his NFL talent. Makes spectacular play game after game after game. Good to see Mari Huggins Bruce make a big catch. Would like to see, I, I like to see it continue to get spread around. But I'd like to see somebody else kind of become a difference maker like we saw from Colin Lacey against Notre Dame. We'd like to have seen, I was hoping to see a lot more from him. I actually predicted that we'd see him go for over 100 yards. But uh, kind of a, a quiet day for Colin Lacey in his second game as a Cardinal after returning from injury. But overall, if you're going to have a quarterback that gets an A, wide receivers must have done a good job as well. Wide receivers also an A. I know I sound kind of like a broken record, and I know probably a lot of us sound like a broken record. Tight ends. would like to see and kind of expected to see the tight ends play a little bit more in the passing game for the Cardinals this year. Maybe a little bit more so in the SMU game. We saw Mark Redman with a couple catches. Jamari uh, Johnson had a couple catches, so they're a little bit more involved, but still would like to see uh, kind of what we saw with Mark Redman getting touchdown in the game one, touchdown in game two. Still like to see the ball get in their hands a little bit more but for this uh, this outing against SMU tight ends we'll give you a B the pro football focus grades for the starting offensive lineman plus one the person who came in to replace the injured Monroe Mills we're just going to go in order of descending number I'm not going to assign a name or anything Got a little notepad here, so I get it right. 67.1, 65.8, 59.6, 52 52.2, 51.5, and a whopping 46.0. Those are your power uh, pro football focus grades for Louisville starting offensive line, plus one, the replacement for Monroe Mills. Tyler, Tyler Shuck sacked three times, hit seven times, ran many other times you know i say ran not for positive yardage but he had to get and go if he's going to hope to get a, a pass off under constant pressure offensive line d expect it better can do better let's do better if louisville anticipates challenging for the acc defensive line well, no sacks. One quarterback hurry, I believe. Three tackles for a loss for the team. Not all, not all of those were 
from a defensive lineman. Ashton, Ashton Gelati, Louisville All-American Edge Ashton Gelati, graded out the best for the Cardinals defensively against SMU. Although he registered just one tackle. SMU was able to kind of run at will in the first half. Kind of throw almost at will for the first and second half. Tough, tough day for the defensive line. The, the run defense did stiffen up. And the defense as a whole kind of continued to stiffen up as the second half progressed. A trend that we're seeing start almost absent and then improve as the game progresses. Got to fix that trend. The defensive line for the performance against the SMU. Let's see. Linebacker. Stan Quan Clark was a uh, PFF national player team member last week. This week he continues to prove that he's continuing to improve. Led the Cardinal defense with nine tackles, had one of the team's three tackles for a loss, just three tackles for a loss. But Stan Quan Clark was one of the ones that had one. TJ Quinn was just a couple spots below him. I think it was seven, six or seven tackles in the game as well. But too many times did we see the SMU quarterback just taken off straight up the middle, kind of like nobody had him. Some of that responsibility certainly sits on the shoulders of the linebackers. For their performance against SMU, linebackers, B minus. What do you think? Up, down, up, down, up, downs. There's probably a number of guys on the local football team that should do up, downs. How do you like that? Let's go up. There you go. Okay, DBs. Wasn't the greatest outing for the defensive backs. Missing, missing Quincy Riley is certainly a big loss. Kevin Jennings, SMU's mobile quarterback, not only hurt Louisville on the ground with 113 yards rushing, he also did it through the air. He completed 21 of 27 for 281 yards. SMU's quarterback, pretty good quarterback. He had a heck of a day against the Cardinals. Not all of that should sit on the shoulders of the defensive backs. It is a team sport, but certainly... It was a rough day, again, for the defensive backs. Do want to acknowledge Tayon, uh, yeah, Tayon Holloway, who had a, another, you know, a couple big plays. Not saying he had a, the best day, um, but had that uh, really nice pass deflection on that deep ball along the Louisville sideline. Had a tackle for a loss. But overall, as a group, and again, hate to strike it a point or two because Quincy Riley is not in there, but reality is reality. The performance was the performance secondary. C minus for the performance in the loss to SMU. Special teams. Brady Hodges got one of his two punts inside the 20. Brock Travelstead again, tip of the hat. Two field goals, 41, 46 yards. Special teams for your performance. Much improved over the week prior and the week prior. B plus for special teams for the effort against SMU. Coaching for the performance against SMU. C, am I being kind? 
You tell me. C's not very good. Maybe C minus. Always remember to hydrate. It's wise to hydrate. Next up for Louisville, their first road ACC game of the season. Game six for the Cardinals. First road ACC game. It's kind of wild. No tune-up for the Cardinals there. First road game, Notre Dame. Second road game, well, October 12th. Next Saturday, 3.30 kick in Charlottesville against a pretty surprising Virginia team so far. They had a comeback win against Boston College 24-14 over the weekend. Yeah, Cavaliers one of the surprise teams in the ACC thus far in 2024. Thanks for going hiking with Michael McCammon. Not the best of report cards for the Cardinals after the 34-27 loss to SMU. Up next, Virginia will dish out another report card after that one as well. Hopefully much improved from what we saw in this game against the Mustangs. Need much better consistency across the board, both sides of the ball, as well as on the sideline and up in the coach's box on the press level. So again, thanks again for going hiking with Michael McCammon. I'm out. There. If you liked it, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you liked it a little bit more, hit the subscribe button. Until next time, appreciate you.